We're going to move on uh, with a look through the international press with Florence hey, Vimino. Yeah. Hi there. Now, uh, you were telling us a bit earlier on about how uh, the French papers uh, thought that Emmanuel Macron put on a, a bit of a performance, a bit of a show when he brought Vladimir Putin to Versailles yesterday. That theme being echoed in some international papers as well. And the Daily Beast was very impressed with Emmanuel Macron. Check out this article by Christopher Dickey. You can see uh, he says that Macron actually managed to get under Vladimir Putin's skin after showing up Trump at the G7 in Sicily. Macron, who, remember, is only 39 years old. We are all remembering <laughs> that here. Uh, he took office just two weeks ago. He was calm, cool, collected, and in complete control at their joint pe press conference, according to this article. Now, uh, this, uh, this uh, article is, is really quite glowing for Macron. It says, look, it's still early days in his five-year uh, term as president. A lot can go wrong in a presidency, but for a demoralized Europe, Macron is like a shot of adrenaline, a model of youthful energy who appears able indeed to put the Wunder, or Wunder, back in Wunderkid. I like it. And moving on with that German theme then, uh, let's uh, get some news from Germany. Slight bit more scepticism from the German press. They weren't that impressed by that oh meeting. Well, they, <laughs> well, not so much Macron, but the meeting in general. Uh -huh. You can see here Die Zeit saying, uh, look, this concept of critical dialogue uh, that Macron has been trying to sell, well, they don't really buy it. It doesn't make sense. According to Die Zeit, what really matters isn't so much this budding uh, or perhaps rekindling of relations between Russia and France. What really matters is the new Franco-German relationship. That's what matters. It is the heart of Europe. It is the heart of Europe, and that's echoed in the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, uh, which also isn't buying this Putin-Macron duo, this pompous uh, attempt to restart Franco-Russian relations at the Versailles Palace. France has openly chosen Europe, uh, and so it cannot forge a new alliance with Putin, who, after all, is anti-Europe and anti-the West. And uh, pro-Russian uh, media. Uh, it'd be interesting to look at them today. Uh, we heard Macron yesterday having some harsh words for Kremlin-backed media uh, that are operating in France. Well, you can see one of uh, those uh, publications, Sputnik. Uh, there's also Russia Today, the French version. Now, you might remember Sputnik and Russia Today France were banned from Macron's campaign offices in the lead-up uh, to the election. Now, what he said yesterday, and keep in mind he said this right in front of Vladimir Putin, is that Russia Today and Sputnik have been tools of influence and they spread untruths about my person and my campaign. They don't behave like organs of the press or of journalism, but as organs of lying propaganda. And as you can imagine, not so surprisingly, Sputnik totally disagrees with this uh, and says that the Kremlin as well disagrees with this. And now, Russia Today went a little bit further. Uh, the editor of the site, and you can read about it here, uh, had quite harsh words for Macron uh, mm -hmm. and said that this, this, this uh, statement by Emmanuel Macron uh, is a real threat to the freedom of expression. I think that's a debate for another time. Let's move on for now to Venezuela, where very serious events are continuing on there, uh, as they have for many, many weeks. Uh, just yesterday, two opposition leaders apparently do seem to have been wounded in anti-government protests. And you can read more about that in time here. You can see a photo there of Enrique uh, Capriles, one of the, uh, well, the opposition leader there, wiping away tears, tear gas. Now, he also posted a photo. Uh, apparently, he was hit in the face with a helmet. We were ambushed. He says he has vowed to file a complaint. The situation in Venezuela is getting a lot of attention. In fact, Liberation, the French left-wing paper, has a very interesting in-depth uh, well, investigation into the Venezuelan crisis in general. It's fascinating if you want to read about it. They're talking about a model that is in a crisis. Uh, NGOs say that at least 79 people have been killed since this extremely violent crisis began back in April. Uh, you can see here they're talking about a, a country divided into pieces. Inflation is skyrocketing. People are struggling to survive. There's a quote here that says uh, in this article, on this, in this investigation, uh, we have to choose between clothing ourselves and eating. Uh, and Liberation takes a closer look at what's happening in the capital, uh, in Caracas, those in favor of the president, Nicolas Maduro, uh, clashing against those against. Uh, and voices uh, that aren't being so heard as much are those of people who are quite moderate.
All right, now, uh, at least one of the French newspapers, as well as uh, our own journalists here at France 24, have been taking an interest in some news that have been coming out of Morocco. Uh, yesterday, authorities there announced that they'd arrested the fugitive leader of a protest movement uh, that's really shaken up uh, the Rif region in the north of Morocco for several months. It's a, it's a quite an interesting situation. We were just starting to talk about it yesterday in the press review, so we've got more details for you here today. Now, this is uh, the communist paper L'Humanité, that talks about how the king, so this is Mohammed VI, has decided to use repression to answer the cultural and social demands of the northern region. So this Rif region, you can see uh, L'Humanité saying the Rif rebels are in the crosshairs of the king. If you want to know more about this rebel leader who was arrested, you just saw a photo of him here. We have quite a good portrait of him here uh, in, at France 24, France 24. This is Nasser Zef Zaifi, 39 years old, Unemployed, he's become somewhat of an internet sensation for his rants on social media against what he calls corruption and the repression of the police uh, state. Now, remember, the unrest started back in October. This after a fishmonger was crushed to death in a rubbish truck after he protested against the seizure of a swordfish caught out of season. It's quite a developing situation. We'll be sure to give you all the details as they come in. All right, very interesting indeed. Like you say, not something that gets uh, widely reported upon that situation there in Morocco. All right, thanks so much, uh, Florence Villeminot, looking through the international uh, press and uh, websites as well, of course, for us. Uh, we're going to take a short break here on Live from Paris. We'll be back in a couple of minutes' time. <laughs> 